Ar nôl frodi ar achwi orydd, croeso yn cynnes i bob un ohono chi, un gwasanaeth prynhawn heddi. Sil y mamau, Mother's Day in the United States. Uh, for those of us who come from Britain, uh, Mother's Day is in March or February, depending on where the third Sunday in Lent is, because that is Mothering Day. So, we do a little bit of everything here. Remember Lent, we remember American Mother's Day, um, not least because mothers are the center of the family, centers of all families, and it is very appropriate that we acknowledge the centrality of that role in worship and in everyday life. Let us pray briefly before the service. Ein tad gofalus a charedig, diolchwn i ti a mae'n gosod mewn taeli oedd, ac am y pleser a ddaw i ni o ddydd i ddydd, o gael bod yn eu cwmni. Wyddi yn heddiw hefyd dros daeli oedd anhapus, oherwydd tlodi, oherwydd pryder, O herwydd siomedigaeth, ac oherwydd cwyrolon ac anghydfod o bob math. Loving Father, we are grateful that you have placed us in the care of families, for that gives us great pleasure from day to day to be in company with those like us. But we also pray for an unhappy families whether it be from poverty, from sickness, from disappointments of all kinds, and from quarrels and disagreements among the members. Give us strength to help one another through difficult times and through good times. A boid po bailoid dan doenai, a forb taili and daili do. Let every hearth be under your loving care, and each family part of God's family. Will you please stand and join with me the responsive reading from Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song. Can wch gan newydd i'r arglwydd, a mae fod wedi gwneud pethau anhygoel. Mae ei fraich gref wedi ennill y fydd i goliaeth iddo. Mae'r arglwydd wedi dangos a'i allu i allu. Mae wedi dangos i'r cynhedloedd a'i fod yn ddiw cyfi iawn. Mae wedi cofio i gariad a'i ffyrlondeb i bobl Israel, ac mae pobl trwy'r byd i gyd wedi gweld diw yn achu. Mae yn dod eto i roi trefn ar y ddeiar, a bydd ein barnu'r byd yn hollol deg a'r bobloedd yn gwbl gyfiawn. A gan i ganu ymhellach ym un rhif 1-3, let us sing hymn number 13. Ci di nid yn y fwlaidd gor a llwythau dynol rhyw. Now, if you look at the translation, it is not an accurate translation of the Welsh words, but these Welsh words are telling us all to join with heavenly choirs to sing the great song of faith that our God is a God of love.
Let us together approach the throne of heavenly grace and make our thanksgivings unto Almighty God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole earth, the whole creation, the beauty of this world, the wonder of life, and the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. And we thank you for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on each other and ultimately you. Above all, we thank you for the gift to the whole world of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us that you are love and who commanded us to give back that love by loving each other. O oh God, we confess that we have not always loved each other. And some of us have not loved at all. Forgive us for spurning your gift and let us know in our lives and our sleep and our dreams that you love us and you have given us the gift of your son who became like us and proved that we could love you and our neighbor as ourselves. We thank you for sustenance day by day and we pray together that you would look out for those we neglect through thoughtlessness and self preoccupation. Lord, the hardest thing of all that you have commanded us to love ourselves. For if we do not love ourselves, we do not learn how to love our neighbor as ourselves. Not 
prideful love, but humble love. And we thank you for the gift of your word and your love. And we pray for all those who are alone in life or think they are alone. And we pray for those who are sick and in despair and depressed, especially do we pray for members of this congregation who, aside from you, have no helper. Give us quick hearts and minds to sustain your servants, our neighbors. And we give you our most humble and hearty thanks for all those who have gone before us in this life and are now at rest with you. Give us grace, we beseech you, to so follow their good example that we, like them, may enter one day into eternal rest. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, I'm taught Sin credi mai esi a dirimisaia, a Christ, wedi caelai geni and blanti view, ac mai paub sin carir tard, and cariai blenti in hevid. Redin in guibod ein board and cari plant dew, os adin in cari dew, 
ac am gwneud beth mae'n ei ddweud. Mae cari diw yn golygu bod yn infydd iddo, a dydy hynny ddim yn anodd, am fod plant diw yn ennill y frwydir yn erbyn y byd. Credu, hynny yw ein ffydd, sy'n rhoi buddygoliaeth yn ei ni. Pwy sy'n llwyddo i ennill y frwydir yn erbyn y byd? Dim ond y rhai sy'n credu mae Iesu a di mab diw. Iesu Grist, daeth yn amlwg pwy oedd pan gafodd ei fydyddio a dŵr a phan gollodd ei waed ar y groes. Nid dim ond y dŵr, ond y dŵr a'r gwaed, ac mae'r ysbryd hefyd yn trystio i ni fod hyn yn wir a mae'r ysbryd ydy'r gwirionedd. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the inspiration of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our reading. Amen. This past week, there was a long article in Saturday's, Friday's Times about the source of the, what we know as the civil rights hymn, we shall overcome someday. That reminded me of many things in Mississippi and Alabama and Washington's ghetto community and Baltimore and Ferguson and many things came flooding into my memory. Selma especially, for there was blood shed in Selma, and blood shed in Montgomery, and blood shed in many communities in the 60s and early 70s. We read in 1 John, the scripture reading that we have just heard, that God is love and she who says she loves God and hateth her sister is a liar. And we read in the scripture we just heard 
that who loves the father loves the son or the children and who loves the children loves the father. The three epistles of John, one, two, and three, were all written at the first decade of the second century AD, when there were very few survivors of the first Christian movement. The great theme of all three epistles, and he calls himself John the Elder, the great theme is the nature of God is love. And fellowship with God is made possible for us by the entrance into human flesh and blood of Jesus of Nazareth, whom we call God's Son. Fellowship with the true God makes us all lovers and makes us, enables us all to love each other. Now there's not normally anything to love about me in order that way. I am short tempered and <laughs> disgusted at stupidity and I might as well declare it. I can't understand how these Republicans deny climate change. <laughs> and the governor of Texas has called out the National Guard to protect Texas against Obama's army. Well, it's no sin to be born stupid. It's only a sin when you're offered such a wonderful country and wonderful friends and most of all, the mystery of love. And life, and every day we must be on our way to thank God. And by the way, the way to thank God is love God back by loving such an unlovable person as your humble servant. And the same goes for me. Now, it says in the same passage of Scripture that God is not only love, but God is light.
there is a light that overcomes the prince of darkness in your heart and your soul and my heart and my soul. And all you have to do is open your heart to the love that is waiting for you and love God back. And our gospel is simply, therefore, you are given the power to suspend your judgment and love me. And I you. That's pretty amazing when you think about it. And when you read these verses, I don't know, and you don't know, what's going to become of your body and spirit or soul or brain after you die. But it's all right, because that's the deal. You're born, you have life, and then we die. And anybody who tells you what happens after that is a liar because they haven't been there. But our tradition claims that a Jewish day worker has been there and back. And if you don't believe that, still, when he got back, he said, it's all right. Because the God that is love in this life is love in any life. And that's the faith that supports us and that enables us to love each other, unlovable though we might be. Now, there's little talk in these three epistles of John the Elder about the resurrection, but Jesus lives in the hearts of all those who are enabled by the power of God to believe that God is love and to love him back. <laughs> I'm afraid you've got to love me. And I'm afraid you got to love yourself. Not a prideful love, but a humble love that enables you to love back. There's a fancy word for the reason that John the Elder wrote these three letters. <clears throat> the reason is he had experienced and received by tradition 
the deliverance from fear and all forms of darkness from the early church fathers and mothers. And we'll see in a moment how important mothers are. I have never preached a sermon on Mother's Day, and this is not a sermon on Mother's Day. The churches <clears throat> to whom John the Elder addressed these letters were small. In fact, for the first 200 years, 250 years, the churches were small enough to be described as house churches. You know what a house church is. The neighbors gather one by one in house after house. And at the beginning of worship, in the Jewish tradition, the lady of the house says the first prayer and lights the first candle. And they were still doing that, even in Roman Asia, where there Jews were not a predominant part of the population. No wonder the theology of all three letters is built on the family. The family was a model for the theology of these letters. Love God the Father and you love the child. You and me. Love you and me and your loving God. Loving takes many forms, many, many forms. Sometimes it's silence, and sometimes it's correcting with an ironic twist, or a joke, or something more serious. But learning how to love is the gift of God, for God is love. The one who loves the parent loves the child, and the one who loves the child loves the parent. It is hard for us to imagine these churches as typical of Christianity. There was no bishop or common authority or even St. Paul or even, in many cases, a Jewish mother to provide singularity along with the same basic theology. And so, lacking in such an authority, many, many small gatherings which grew into buildings and institutions and male hierarchies 
all institutions need to be flushed once in a while. And the chief trouble with the church today is it hasn't been flushed often enough. And I'm not talking about only about the Roman Catholic. No wonder our scripture for today has Jesus overcoming the prince of darkness. For God is light, and light shines in worship gathered round the table, sharing bread and wine were the first candle lit by the lady of the house and the first prayer offered by her. Well, what about we shall overcome someday? My experience with we shall overcome may be of illuminating interest to you. My chief job in Washington, where I was a parish priest in the inner city, namely black constituency, and I learned a lot there, but I always wondered when we sang, we shall overcome someday. When would that day come for these folks who had been cut off welfare because the welfare inspectors found a man in their house and they were terminated, and we found them there, sitting in the rain on an old sofa with a lamp and five children. When? What are we going to overcome? And we white clergy who are caught up by the gospel in the movement often were invited to Mississippi and Alabama to assist in voter registration drives. And I went on a number of those trips. It wasn't my main job, but I often responded because Stokely Carmichael was a good friend of mine. In fact, he had been our babysitter when he was a sophomore at Howard University. And I often wondered when the picketing was finished and the blacks had once again been denied registering to vote. I often wonder, we sang, we shall overcome someday. And I often wondered when that day would come as we climbed back on our planes in Memphis and flew back to Washington. We shall overcome someday. Even 
Lyndon Baines Johnson quoted the song on national television when he signed the Voter Registration Act in 1965. The Greek word overcome means to vanquish completely. Vanquish completely. John the Elder writes in chapter 5, God loves through his Son, which he sent into the world to overcome with his love all inequity and injustice among humankind. God is the light of the world, revealing a pathway for God's love to overcome all hatred and prejudice amongst God's people. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's available even now. Who shall overcome? People who open their hearts. People who are enabled to open their hearts to each other. And people who thereby know that God is love. Those are the people who shall overcome. And it's not someday. It's today. Amen.
Gwan wil frwdyr a chwiorydd. Crwy unwaith eto, cwpnawn da a croeso. Dear brothers and sisters, once again on this lovely day we say welcome. A special welcome to our visitors. Our own David Williams is with us today and I understand he has brought his cousins with us from Wales. Special welcome to you. We look forward to talking with you at the Tebach. Anybody else visiting for the first time? Okay. Well, I'd like to make a few church-related announcements. On the back of your bulletin, you'll see a notice about the St. David Society sponsoring an evening of music coming up on Friday, May 29th. Something new, something old. With Philippe Schwartz, principal trumpet of the BBC Wales Orchestra. Uh, donations at the door will support the scholarship program of the society. And uh, I see there's a Welsh whiskey tasting during the reception after the concert. That may be of interest. Uh, Women's Welsh Club will be having our last meeting until September on June 7th, uh, first Saturday in June. There is a silent auction and a uh, nice luncheon. And we do hope you'll join us there. Hard to believe, but uh, next month is June, and that means that we will be dealing with the nominating committee. We have three of our council members stepping off this year, and we need to find three more. So I urge you, you know, there's quite a lot of details going into keeping our church going. I never realized how tricky it was to do this bulletin until uh, I got to do a few of them a couple of years ago. We need people to be readers. We need someone to greet our guests at the door. And I have a special request from uh, Audrey Roberts. We have a lovely Welsh institution after each service called the Teibach. And we really need somebody to coordinate that for if one person would take one month, that would be very helpful. All you have to do basically is to bring the milk and set up the table. We have tablecloths and other things upstairs. And it really makes a difference. And then everybody pitches in for the big events. So please think about how you can become more involved in Iglesia Cymru, our congregation of the Welsh people, because we need you. And that's the truth. Now, would those who are receiving the offering please come forward?
God which passeth understanding and the love of God be upon you and rest with you forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you until God loves you and you see God face to face. Amen.